Hey, this is Mrs. Reichelt, and we are continuing on with Chapter 5. This video is going to talk a lot about joints, and then you'll have one more after this, and you'll be officially done with Chapter 5. Um, so, let's go ahead and get started here. Joints are articulation of bone, and really that's just another way of saying that a joint is where two bones meet. It's two bones meet at some point and those are going to be at a joint. Okay, the function of joints are to hold bones together and to also allow for mobility. And there are a couple of different ways that joints are classified. First is they're classified functionally and second they're classified structurally. So we're going to go ahead and look in here and see the different functional classifications first. Okay, so a functional classification, um, the first is synarthroses. Okay, so a synarthroses is a way to classify immovable joints. So what's an immovable joint that you already know of? Hopefully you're saying sutures right now. <laughs> Amphiarthroses are going to be slightly movable. And then the diarthroses are going to be freely movable. And then our structural classifications of joints. You have fibrous joints. Fibrous joints are immovable, so they're generally immovable. I guess I better start over and spell that right, huh? <laughs> Cartilaginous joints are generally slightly movable. And then synovial joints are freely movable. Okay, so you have functional classification of joints and then also structural classification. So let's go ahead and look at the fibrous joint. Okay, so a fibrous joint here. Better. Okay, so a fibrous joints are going to be when bones unite are united by a fibrous tissue. So the fibrous tissue connects the bone Sutures and syndesmoses are an example of those. Um, so example are sutures in the cranium and then also the distal end of the tibia and the fibula. Cartilaginous joints, this is where the bone is connected by some sort of cartilage. So an example of pubic symphysis or the intervertebral joints. Um, hopefully you remember from a couple slides, or I guess a couple videos ago, um, you have fibrocartilage that's in between each of the vertebral column. Okay, so between each vertebrae, you have fibrocartilage. Fibrocartilage is um, going to act as a cartilaginous joint in that it's going to allow for some movement, but not a lot of it. And then next up are the synovial joints. Synovial joints are articulating bones that are separated by a joint cavity. So this would be an example of a joint cavity. So the bones are separated. separated. Synovial fluid is found within the joint cavity. And there's a couple different types of um, synovial joints. We have plane joints, hinge, pivot, um, condylar, saddle and ball and socket. Don't worry about writing these right now. We'll go into them right here. Okay, so first up here, we have a plane joint. A plane joint is um, an example of the wrist would be or the carpals would be an example of a plane joint. A hinge joint, a good example of that, this is what a hinge joint looks like, would be the elbow would be an example of a hinge joint. A pivot joint, um, you could say the ulna and the radius are a pivot joint, but in addition to that, you could say the um, 
atlas and axis are a pivot joint. Okay, so the um, condyloid joint or the condylar joint, um, an example here would be something like the knuckles. Okay, and that's the picture of that. So the knuckles would be an example of there. Uh, a saddle joint, an example of that would be your um, thumb. So your thumbs would be a good example of that. And then ball and socket, um, you can take the example of your shoulder. Okay, so some features of synovial joints include articular cartilage, which is hyaline cartilage, and it covers the end of the bone, a fibrous articular capsule that encloses joint surface, and then a joint cavity, which is filled with synovial fluid. Ligaments are also going to reinforce the joint as well. Okay, so a couple structures that are also associated with synovial joints. Um, the first is a bursae, which is a flattened fibrous sac. A bursae is um, lined with synovial mem membranes, also filled with synovial fluid, but it's not actually a part of the joint. And then we have a tendon sheath, which is an elongated bursa that wraps around a tendon. And I hope I put a picture of that, but if not, we'll have to, we'll look at these in lab as well. And it looks like I did not do a picture of that, so we'll go ahead and talk about each of those in class.